Hey YouTube, it's Katie from Aurora Har. The fluffy dog and I have embarked on a road trip to Wyoming. We've hit a roadblock. She's in no hurry. Fluffy dog wants to go insane right now because of the cows. He's holding it together though. Behind me is a small part of the Sand Creek National Natural Landscape. It's kind of an unusual public land de designation that I had never heard of, but it's actually public land and private land uh, that is conserved for its landscaped qualities, I suppose. This particular one is full of rock formations that are pretty neat. What's interesting is that these rock formations are carved by wind, not water. And that tells you what you need to know about Laramie. We are currently in the Snowy Range, just outside of Centennial, Wyoming. And it's so pretty. Used to live here, and I had no idea that all this wonderful land was up here. <sighs> I was missing out. Fluffy's wandering around behind me and checking out the landscape. And me too, this is gorgeous. Today, Fluffy Dog and I are headed back to Adobe Town, which is a really cool place in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming. It's in between Rock Springs and Rollins off of I-80. If you're driving on I-80 through Wyoming, it looks like there's absolutely nothing beyond all the sagebrush. But if you get off of the highway, there's actually a lot of really cool things. One of them is Adobe Town. We are headed back there today. going to camp out there for two nights before heading up to Jackson to see the folks. It's crazy hot here. Fluffy and I are laying underneath my improvised shade structure. I always carry a tarp with me and I stuck it in the doors of the Jeep and bungeed it down a couple of ridiculous ways. But it's working. Um, it's holding up to the winds here because even though it's hot, it is also windy. Something you always gotta take into account. So we're probably just gonna chill here, take a nap for a couple hours until the sun goes down a bit. The first time I came here was maybe in 2004, I believe. Uh, it was just a place I had read about in a book and thought, hey, that, that might be cool. I'll go visit there. Um, I had no idea what I was doing um, out in the desert and uh, survived but I'm glad I have more knowledge now of, of what to expect. Um, 
I discovered in this desert quicksand's a real thing. Uh, and I discovered it uh, by getting my truck stuck in quicksand. Yeah, that was my truck in quicksand. That was a very big crash course in, in vehicle recovery. Uh, it's young and stupid. You may be wondering, what the heck is Adobe Town? Adobe Town is a geologic area that sits in the middle of the Continental Divide Basin. The Continental Divide Basin um, actually starts in Wyoming, and it is where the Continental Divide actually splits. It goes kind of in a circle like this before coming back together. And the basin uh, in that middle of that split is where I am right now. And water that falls in here doesn't leave here. It evaporates. And one of the neat features and why there's so many cool geologic features around here um, is mainly because this used to be an ancient uh, inland ocean and Yellowstone erupted and laid a layer of ash, volcanic ash, about a thousand feet thick in this area. Which, between the, the sedimentary layers of, uh, from the inland ocean to the decayed volcanic ash, there's really neat rock formations as those have been eroded away over the millennia. It's not for everyone, uh, for sure, but feels kind of like home. It's harsh and it's an unforgiving environment. The wind blows all the time. That's not so unusual for most places in Wyoming, but uh, it really, really, really blows almost all the time here. But this morning, Fluffy and I are just hiking around. We're hiking up a wash right now. Um, I like to stick in the washes when I'm hiking around here. There are no actual trails. But if you stay to the washes, you're less likely to step on a rattlesnake. Yeah, they're here. There's a lot of them. About 10 miles down the road from Adobe Town is this really cool old derelict ranch. It's filled with rattlesnakes, like everything else here. You could explore inside the buildings if you want. I don't want to because I think they're going to fall down. Probably soon.
so my plan is basically to settle in for the night then head out tomorrow and go to Jackson, Wyoming visit my folks and uh, hopefully have a few adventures there We're in lovely Grand Teton National Park and about to go on a float trip with Triangle X. I'm here with my parents. Um, so I've been living in the lap of luxury for a few days, which is nice. We're gonna go on a float trip tonight and then fishing tomorrow. Woohoo! Woo Aurora! <laughs> It's just past Bow Dark 30 and got dad getting the boat ready and we're gonna go fishing today on Yellowstone Lake. It'll be Fluffy's first time ever in a boat, so we will see how he does right now. He uh, has no idea what's in store for him. As it turns out, Fluffy Dog is a really good boat dog. Good day for you, Flu. Are you tired now? Are you ready to go get some ice cream? Fluffy and I have just spent the last few days in Jackson and now we're headed just to just outside of Cody, Wyoming to check out a Jeep trail. It's called the Morrison Jeep Trail. So we just drove through a Wyoming traffic jam. Probably 50 bison were crossing the road and there were probably 50 to 70 more that were kind of down a bench uh, on their way to crossing the road. So we got through before the, before the rest of the crowd. That was kind of cool. We're totally stuck in a bison jam. Our second bison jam of the day. And we've hit our third bison jam in a row. Fluffy is quite fascinated by the bison jam. He's staring out the windows, checking them out. I am currently driving the most scenic, scenic road I have ever been on. This is the Beartooth Highway and it's amazing. You put yourself to bed already? Did ya? And you were ready to go to sleep? Good morning, YouTube. Fluffy and I are getting ready to head out on the Morrison Trail. It's about 22 miles. About a mile of it, apparently, is um, pretty crazy switchbacks. Depending on who you talk to, it's about 28. 
switchbacks that are supposed to be pretty tight and a little bit crazy. reached the switchback portion of the Morrison Jeep Trail and it goes up for sure. Where I am now you can maybe see the road behind me. It switchbacks up right here to get to the top of this plateau and I bet the views, views from the top of that plateau are amazing. Fluffy Dog is currently running around and stretching his legs before we get in the bumpy car again. I think once I get about 10 more feet, I'm in the clear, but this is not fun. traction devices and they worked uh, just like they're supposed to uh, and I have worked up a bit of a sweat I am wishing that I had brought my waffle boards because I think they would have helped a great deal um, probably would have been a little better traction aid than these guys um, but and I would have had one for each tire and that could have saved a bit of time but I didn't think I was going to be encountering any real deep sand this trip, so <laughs> lesson learned. Take the waffle boards. Uh, but the X-Bulls, I mean, I, I, I can't complain. They've gotten me up this kind of crazy sandy hill, so there you go. But they did get a little worn. I'll show you. That's the normal uh, kind of lug pattern on there. And then... I had to turn them around while I was using them because I wore the little lugs down at the top and they were no longer functioning as a traction device in that direction. They worked fine going once I turned them the other direction, but yeah, they got, they got worn pretty good. Now I've just got to dump all the sand out of my shoes and out of the Jeep. It's a... Pretty significant pile of sand in my foot well. Made it per past the first obstacle of the Morrison Jeep Road, which is that crazy sandy bit. Um, never been so happy to see a really rocky portion of the road in front of me. <laughs> That's a, a knock on wood. It's typically a lot easier than sand. Right, so we've come to the first switch back and I wish you could see in on video just uh, how interesting this switchback is. I don't anticipate the Jeep having any issues with it, but it's definitely, this is definitely not a beginner trail. Just based on the sand, based on what I'm seeing with this first switchback. One switch back down, 27 more to go.
gosh, I wish you could tell how steep and off camber this is. Um, had to run the Jeep on either side of kind of these rocks that were the tires of the Jeep on either side of these rocks here to get up it. And it still took like turning, well, probably five or six times, which is a lot um, to get up a switchback. So like a six point turn to get up that. So far, we are quite a ways up. Um, there's the Jeep up behind me. Uh, past the next switchback. I don't even know how many switchbacks have gone up so far. Um, but I did have to do a little trail construction to get past a section of trail. So I'm going to do some uh, trail deconstruction because you don't want to leave your handiwork behind, which is right here are these rocks. Um, some people might want the challenge of not having the rocks there. So they helped me get over that big rock. So I appreciate them, but time to remove them for the next person. We've got some pretty big rain clouds coming in behind us, so we can't dally, but we've reached the top, or it appears we've reached the, the top, or as high as you can go, of the Jeep Trail, and wow. It's a very pretty morning. I'm just outside of Cody, Wyoming in the National Forest. And we are packing up the Jeep because it's time to go home. And you should take a look at what Fluffy looks like. And I've got to put him in my car. <laughs> <laughs> 